Hi and welcome back to Guide to SolidWorks. In this tutorial we're going to be having a look at a beginner's guide again, um, a practicing model and process at creating this model here. Now this uh, type of activity is going to be brilliant for anyone that is trying to develop their skills in SolidWorks and progress along from beginner level through to start moving into sort of an intermediate level user in the SolidWorks uh, software. Now if you are new to the channel we do have lots of SOLIDWORKS content uh, regularly updated on a weekly basis so please pop on, uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, if you are enjoying the content have a look at some of them with videos and um, hit some likes and some comments for future uh, videos that you'd like us to have a look at for you. So in this case what I'm going to do is we're going to dive into this. First of all I'm going to quickly run through how I'm going to go around making this, how I'm going to go around modelling it and then we'll uh, start having a go at making it ourselves. So the first process of what we'll do is we're going to make this hub section in the centre. Okay, Off this hub section I'm then going to create this um, uh, extension here of these sort of two arm sections um, connecting together and then I'm going to put on the um, uh, sort of the locking mechanisms here, the arms with the holes in to bolt it down. There's three of these, two there and one on the back side as well. So uh, we will be looking at creating all of them processes. For that I'll just be modeling that on the side, I'll model one of these and then I will pattern the other one into place. Okay, so let's have a go and see how we get on. Okay, so let's start on here. Um, we're going to start on this top plane here and I'm going to start with a sketch there. Uh, for the central hub. So I'm going to start in our centre or our origin with a circle there and drag that out. Now this is going to be a diameter of 90 to give us that hub size. Now that diam that hub is 60 mil depth so I'm going to go to features and I'm going to extrude. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude from mid plane. Okay, which means I'll have 30 down and 30 up. So let's do that from there. So, oh, sorry. 60, giving me 30 down and 30 up. And that gives me my central hub, like so. And I'm going to view that from the top. And I am going to sketch on the top plane. So let's sketch on there. Okay. Now, taking this hub. I'm going to click on the front face and then go convert entities and that will take that edge and create a sketch from it. Now from that sketch I'm going to put a center line from the middle of my hub and drag that out over here somewhere just randomly and drop it down there. Now I can add a dimension or a distance to that and that dimension across there is going to be 142 mil. Okay. So that's coming out there, 142 mil. Now, on the end of that, I'm going to have some circles. So the first one is going to be my outer circle on the end here, and that is going to be a 25 mil diameter. Okay. And then my inside circle, which will be in the center of this, is going to be 12 like so. So I've got 25 and 12 and then from there um, I'm going to create a tangential line let's go to the line tool and I'm going to make this tangential so I'm going to click on the outside of that circle drag the line away now that will make it tangential to um, the circle. At the moment I've still got my finger pressed down on the mouse button. I'm going to drag that over, find the circle at the top here and find the tangential position come up. You'll see there in the yellow box that the second icon along is the circle with a line across the outside. That's our tangential icon. As soon as that appears we can let go of our mouse button and it will connect itself to both of them circles. <coughs> What we need to make sure is that line is black, which means it's fully defined, it's locked in place. If it's not black, then we might need to just have another look at repeating that process. Delete the line away, repeat it, until we make sure that that line is fully defined. I'm going to do the same at the beginning at the bottom. So I'm going to click on that line anywhere on that circle, pull it away, keeping my finger down on the mouse button, bring it over to this circle, 
move it around until I find the tangential um, a relationship come up in my little yellow box and release my um, mouse button. Now, some people do have quite a lot of issues with these doing circles and creating lines, tangential lines between circles. I find that's the easiest way to do it. So, um, if you want to have a go at doing that method, that's probably going to be your quickest. There is other ways of doing it, um, but they can become a little bit fiddly. <coughs> okay, so now I've got them in place. What I also need to do is add another circle in here. This looks like it's going to be a lot of circles, but let's get this one in place too. And this circle here is going to be... Um, <coughs> it's got a radius of 20... 22.5 so if I times that by 2 that will give me my diameter there for that circle now I'm just going to trim a few bits away here because I don't want this outer edge of the circle I just want it up to there like so so I'm going to trim that away and then what I also want is I want these two lines here to be um, offset so I'm going to click that line there and I'm going to click that line there I'm just going to go one direction. I want to go inside. Let's do one of these at a time because at the moment it's going to chuck them both out. Uh, I want it to be offset by 10. So I'm going to drop that in there and click. I'm going to do the same with the bottom one. Offset and drop that one in there as well, like so. Okay. The last part I'm after is an extension circle on this inside here. So coming back to my origin of my drawing, I'm going to drag a circle out here. <coughs> now I know that the gap between this circle and this circle here is going to be 10 and that's where I've got this 10 offset here sorry so if you was wondering where this 10 offsets come from it's come from the fact that this circle is offset 10 to that and it keeps the same distance around um, that outer profile I'm just going to trim a few bits away so we're not ending up with all these lines um, crossing over So I'm just getting rid of a few bits there. I want to keep that gap in because this is separate. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that line, that line, and that line, and repeat this coming out too. Um, I am going to keep that in there. Now you'll see that one's come under defined. So let's just add that. Um, that's still at 10 there. So let's keep that in there. But add this di uh, dimension in to fully define that back up again. Okay, so we've got that in place now. Right, so what we're going to do here is then is to extrude this. So I'm going to features extrude. Now I'm going to have to select a few contours to do this. Um, I'm going to need to have that contour and that contour there. Now you'll see that's come up too high, way too high. I want that to only be coming up um, at 20. So let's go 20 up in one direction. And then I'm going to come down in direction 2. I'm going to come down 10. So I've gone up 20 and down 10 from that um, top plane there, giving me that distance that I need. And tick there like so. Okay, so I've used that to create this section. I just need to add this little bar in across the center. Now if I can come back to my sketch I used for this model, so I'll just drop down the arrow at the side, click on sketch to there, and I can go to extrude and use that sketch again. Now it'll ask me for a contour, so I'm just going to select that contour there. And this I only want to be um, 10. So drop that down to 10 going to cut 10 from that top plane and it'll fit perfectly in the center like so okay I'm just going to put some fillets into this so fill it now I've got a three millet fillet in the inside of here so I'm just going to set that as a three and I'm just going to pick up these inside edges here like so and there we go then fillets in there and that's this top end now completed so that's that end now done 
Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip to the side view so we can see that side on and I'm going to add this section in here. So I'm going to go to the front plane and I'm going to sketch on that front plane like so. Now what I want to do is I want to put a circle in here. In fact, actually, I'm just going to put a line in here to start off with. So we'll go from the top there, across. I'll drop a line down there. Um, and then I'll finish that off in a moment. I'm just going to use that line there uh, for construction. So I'm just going to change that to a center line for construction. And I'm going to drop a circle on that up to that end, like so. Now, what I'm after is a distance from this origin here over to the center of my circle, which is going to be um, 65. So it's coming 65 out there. And the size of my circle here is going to be um, 32. Okay, so I just want a circle on the inside of that as well. And that circle on the inside there is going to be um, 14. Okay, so I'm just making sure I've got that selected for construction, that line there. It is for construction. It just means it won't show up on the modeling when um, I'm trying to extrude it. It won't affect the model. And I'm just going to close that off. So you can see there now how that's fully defined. And uh, from that fully defined, I'm going to Features, Extrude. And again, select the contours that I want to extrude. So then they're like so. Uh, this is going to be 16, but it's going to be 16 from the midpoint. <coughs> so just make sure I've got that 16 mil across like so and tick now you'll notice that that has technically extruded all the way into the middle of here and that's why I've not taken the holes out of here yet because if I was to have taken the holes out and then done that I'd have ended up with a big chunk of material in the middle I'm gonna do them right near the end okay so I've got this side piece in here now I want the two at the bottom so let's go um, click on the bottom face there and I'm going to sketch on that bottom face and then I'm going to view this from the top and I'm going to drop in there a couple of center lines so one straight up there like so and then one um, at an angle coming out here like so now this angle between there and there it's going to be 30 degrees, so let's get that set at 30. And then on the end of here, I'm going to have um, two circles set at the same size as the ones I've just had. So uh, that's going to be 32. And that's going to be 14. Okay, now I just need this distance out. Um, and the distance out from my center or of this line here, oh, let's get that right. Distance out of that line there is going to be 65. Okay, now what I could do is I could draw some lines coming down here, but that would make it quite awkward for the terms of modeling. Because um, if I show you, try and connect a line to the end of here well it's not actually an end point the end, the coincident points in the circle are there so it's going to be quite awkward to try and get it exactly coming down here so what I can do is I can take the center line coming up here to the circle and I can offset that now I'm going to offset that by directional and I know if I want it 16 mil out each way that that's the same as the 32 so that'll pick up on there and I can tick like so so now I've got them two lines connected to the edges of the circle there. Uh, I also want to just close this off. So I'm going to take the edge of this model here and convert that to a circle like so as well. Now if I go to features and you'll see here now I don't need to really trim all this away. I'm going to show you how I do it without trimming. So you go to features, extrude. 
It'll ask me to pick up some contours. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to leave the rest. You'll notice it's coming down, so I'm just going to flip the direction there. So it's coming up. And I'm still set at 16. That's what I want there. And tick there. And we've created that section in place. Like so. Now, <coughs> I want to create the other one. I'm not going to remodel it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Pattern. I'm going to go to Circular Pattern. I'm going to pick a direction, which let's use that top edge there. Um, or that bottom edge doesn't really make much difference. Going to give me a circle to pattern around. It's not going to give me a circle to pattern around. That's not an issue. What I'll do is I'll take this hole in the center first. So let's go to this top plate and I'll go sketch on there instead. And we'll take a circle. And we'll drop that on there. So that circle in the top is going to be um, uh, 64. And I'm going to go features and drop that down to a cut of 20. So we'll drop that down from the 16 to the 20. And just drop that into there. Now as long as that's there, now we've got a full circle. I can now go to features, circular pattern. Click that, it'll pick up as my direction there. And I can now add my feature as this model at the back here. It'll pick that up. Now, I want two of them, but I want them sped equally. Well, I don't want them equally spaced. I want them in the same position on the other side. So it's 30 degrees offset from the 90 there. So I'm going to go um, 120 round. We'll get it in exactly the same place on the other side. Like so. <coughs> And take that and drop that in place there. So the last part then, just on this inside surface here, I'm going to sketch. I'm going to drop a last circle. Onto the origin there. And I'm just going to open that up. And let's put the dimension on that. Which in this case is going to be um, 44. And I'm going to take that all the way through. So cut. and through all like so tick there and that is my model completely modeled um, for the structure I'm just gonna add an appearance to this so let's go to the appearance option and um, I'm gonna go to the body appearance there and I'm just gonna add a color in so I'll just use this um, like sort of browny orangey color here tick there and we've got our model completed exactly as we showed at the beginning. So that's taking you through the modeling process and intermediate model there. There's just a few little more techniques that we have to get our head around, the things that we've not looked at in the past. Um, mainly the setup, as long as we had our setup um, from our uh, top plane um, and then did it mid plane. So we started off with a hub mid plane. It made things a lot easier in terms of creating this armature coming out here so if you like that tutorial please hit the thumbs up give us a big like um, if you've got any comments in terms of how you want to go at any of these types of um, models before and how do you find them or is there anything you'd like me to have a look at for the future please let us know put that down in the comments uh, and i'll see what i can do like I say, we do this weekly, so we're trying to get videos on here weekly to support you with SolidWorks content. Um, uh, if you like the videos, please subscribe, join the channel. Uh, everybody subscribe to help support the channel and helps us develop. Um, and I will see you in the next tutorial. So, bye for now.